naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. All right. I want to welcome everybody to... Uh, I can't talk. <laughs> to Iggy Garcia Live, episode 141. Uh, today, my guest is Philip Cloudpower Landis. And Jonathan, while I'm talking Landis, they'll be with us here shortly. I uh, just wanted to kind of get started with the show, just kind of get going here and kind of get the preliminary things going. So we're going to we're gonna light a candle here, like we always do before our show. Give thanks to our ancestors. Thanks to all those who came before us, those who trailblazed a little bit of the work for us, as one day we will trailblaze for others. So. What is above is below, side to side, the medicine wheel. Thank you, ancestors, for this moment, for this opportunity to share, to be here and to be able to share with everyone our feelings, our emotions, and the things that we have to talk about tonight, that we be in the space that we need to be. Oh, all right. And as also, this is my lavender common sage blend it's a little bit mix of different herbs and stuff that i grow in my yard just kind of set the tone set the space get the energy going give thanks these shows are sacred these shows are important to me these shows mean a lot to a lot of people who listen to them. So I want to have, there we go. All right. So I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's in the place they need to be right now. I know uh, things are a little bit screwy out there. There's a whole bunch of things going on in the world. No, nothing that we don't already know what's happening. The world is a, uh, in a little bit of disarray but one thing that did kind of play out pretty well today i thought was uh, the floyd case uh, where the officer was found guilty on all three counts and you know rightfully so that we all watched and witnessed that last year how that all played out and how that all went down and you know i'm there's not a whole lot to talk about except for that's what should that's that should be the result that should be the result that we got from that. That should be how that should have played out. And I believe justice was served. And, <clears throat> you know, it's a shame that it had to be that, that it had to get down to that level, that it had to actually go down that road for us to learn as humans, as a society, that you can't do that. You can't stomp on someone's back their neck and you know expect that you're gonna just you're gonna get away with that and you know i know that police force is dangerous work and i get it that you know there there's a <clears throat> excuse me there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables that go into that and there's a lot of things that um you know it's a dangerous job and you know i just hope that people who saw this uh historic event happen today Unfortunately, it had to be at the cost of someone's life. Someone had to lose their life in order for us to get to this point. It just shows that we have a lot of work to do in this in this world, in this society. The things just aren't going to happen, um, you know, by chance. That we have a lot of work that we really have to dig down and do. And if we don't do it, who's going to do it, right? Now, I personally didn't see this going any other way. I didn't personally see it happening um, in the manner where, you know, he was, he was found, he was found guilty. And, you know, it could have gone any way. It just really, it was that nerve wracking. It was that, that much, that much uh, tension 
that we didn't even realize how much tension it was until you know you start watching the news the final and the the moments where the things are starting to wind down and i found it really cur- i found it really curious that that um that even the newscasters didn't know what to say because i, I kind of flipped through all the channels i flipped around just to kind of get a different perspective a different feel cnn fox uh cbs abc nbc just you know just to kind of get the feel and they all were kind of on they were on that edge you know like anything if if, if he was acquitted that this would have been a uh, horrendous nightmare this would have been crazy that this would have been like a total mess and 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 i'm just and you hear me out here because it may sound funny i'm not saying that they found him guilty because they didn't want to cause any problems in the streets no that's not what happened that's not nothing like that this man did something that you just don't do to another human being you know you don't especially a person who's handcuffed a person who's who's um you know already detained to some degree and you know it's it's just a, a, a tragedy a tragedy on all fronts so i'm going to bring on my guests here I'm going to bring my guests here. My guests are popping in on the show. And so hopefully they can hear me. Guys, I'm already on the air. So welcome to the show. How are you? Good to see you. See you guys pretty muted there. So um, once they get themselves aligned, then we will continue with our with our talk here. But of course, today was just uh, one of those things that just, you know, it was kind of, uh, we weren't sure how it was going to play out. And so... But it did play out. George Floyd, you know, lost his life. And the officer uh, was guilty on all counts. And unfortunately, that's kind of the things that happen. It's That's just one case out of many cases. And hopefully that we are able to learn from this, this tragedy, all around tragedy. And so, gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to the show. I hope hey, you good evening. Good evening, good evening. I'm just talking a little bit about the George Floyd uh, the case and everything, how it all went down. and just how society is has to learn and you know there's just certain things we can't do and then you know there's things that we sometimes in society it becomes difficult when there's so many of us yes accountability is a serious issue when you're dealing with populations as big as ours um and you know i work with one of our pelly here in Mm -hmm. missouri we're structural detailers one of the conversations we had earlier today while the while we were waiting for the reports of the trial for the verdict was a comparison between the ancient world, the, mm-hmm. the justice system of the ancient world here in the, in the Americas and a couple of other places that I've studied around the world uh, versus today. And we, we've both, both of us, Joseph and I, we've both come across people who make the really naive declaration that there just weren't, criminals back uh, in those days whatever. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like um well legends and the narratives of our ancestors speak of laws and order that were put in place by councils and communities and societies and were relevant enough for their day to be passed on through right. generations right. right which seems to which would seem to dispute the statement contradict the statement of this other fellow that we were talking about right um but it, as wherever there are humans on this planet there will be mm-hmm. crime it's just this a matter of learning it's just a matter of learning how as a civilization as a culture locally and generally how to deal with these things in mm-hmm. a way that ideally reduces the propensity for the injury in future and that is something that our ancestors were better at, I think, than it, we are today. The, you know, the whole discourse uh, over this latest uh, episode was not any kind of question as to whether the man did the wrong thing or committed the crime. I think I think the video in this case pretty much indicted him, and it yeah. was damning. It showed us all. We all have our own opinions of mm-hmm. what went down there, and and mm-hmm. I don't even want to talk to people who have. A different opinion of mine in this case <laughs> my, my opinion is always right anyway but you know, in this case yeah. I mean, uh. it is not a difficult thing for a good person to avoid doing those kinds of things 
Yeah. It's a reaction of the uh, of uh, it's a reaction of the authorities. It's mm -hmm. the it's a reaction of the systems in place uh, that are supposed to be law and justice. Mm -hmm. Those are things that have been filled with inequity, and right. I think that this is a step forward to changing that dynamic in our country. In the old days, that Jonathan was just uh, re <laughs> remarking the punishments were significantly more harsh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and in my mind, um, more just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <You> really, really, <laughs> I mean, you get injury like that upon anybody mm -hmm. and you simply were, you were, your life was either taken outright uh, from, from our mm -hmm. ancestors point yeah. of view, or you were cast out into the lone world, which was essentially a death sentence right because you didn't make it out there without community mm -hmm. yeah. and in a large sense um culturally we're not making it here without community we're not making it in the present day without community mm -hmm. so with these kinds of inequities in our culture that means that essentially we all every one of us to a man woman and child are being passed out into the lone world mm -hmm. that's the situation that must change and i think this was a step forward towards that end yeah, not much has changed. Like you said, it's probably <laughs> harsh, harsh and swift in the old days, yeah. right? Yeah. I call it the old days. <laughs> you know. The good old days. Yeah, the really you know, good old days. I've been talking to some restorationists lately who want to bring back the good old days of the ancient Levitical, you know, practices and beliefs and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, whoa, you people do not know what you are talking about. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's rough. That was a hard really period out. in history to live through. I mean, you, you yeah. smart mouth your dad, and you know the community could haul you outside the wall and kill you. Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. That's a tad <laughs> harsher than, in my expert opinion, I think that goes a little far. So the topic is actually pretty relevant then, because what we're going to talk about. Excuse me. <laughs> That's funny. No, it's just funny because we're talking about, you know, current events and things that are happening. And, you know, the biggest current event that we have is what this, this death, uh, death all around us, right? <laughs> death horrible, is the, horrible is, death. yeah. Is this is where we're at, and so we've been talking. We've talked several times now over the course of a couple months. We've had you on, sharing uh, some things and some topics and some ideas. What I would like to do today is kind of get away from as much as we can, but sometimes you can't get away from the fear aspect of things. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to get into a little bit more. What can we do to enhance? What can we do to become more a little more positive? A little bit more. In a, an alignment to something, make something better than what, because we already know what we have and it's right, right in front of us. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's, we have all this fear and all this death and all this uh, vaccines and all these things that are happening. So what about the people who don't want to do it and the people who do do it? So how do we bring people together? Because we're all discombobulated and separated in factions and, and especially here in Columbus. And I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm part of it. I, I've been spit on i've been throwing things been thrown at me and i'm just lying <laughs> but you know there's been a lot of you know a lot of stuff yeah. that's been happening here in columbus i've seen people really just be very vicious with one another about the topics that we are in these current events that we have especially with the pandemic that we are in well we've become a we've become a real vicious uh culture mm -hmm. really uh, dichotic and vicious and we we need to we need to be doing things at home that bring that back to sanity. You you make a good point. Let's talk about something positive. Yeah, I, I, I as Nimenha, as a Peli, something that happens on a broader scale, either culturally or socially, mm -hmm. it still finds itself relevant even on yeah. a local individual scale. Even when it comes to systems of the body, for example, we can't regard any single system in the body by itself exclusively because they're so closely connected to all the other systems. Well, you can't. Right? You're dumb if you do. Well, okay. So yeah, you can. It's dumb. But it's dumb. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so we, we, as part of our culture, we advocate the exploration and the utilization of critical thinking. Yeah. In critical thinking, we create associations, relationships. We explore how things interconnect with one another. 
And more often than not, we find that things on the smaller scale interconnect and affect those things on the larger scale and vice versa, yeah. back and forth. This is one of the reasons why Nemenha medicine wheel critical thinking meshes so seamlessly into principles like permaculture and mm -hmm. sustainable agriculture, sustainable horticulture, apothecary medicine, because so many things tie into each other mm -hmm. that you end up unable to keep everything parsed out in their little factions and little groups and cliques and cliches. So, and one of the, one of the subjects that I wanted to talk about um, okay. that I mentioned to you, Iggy, was immune health. Immune health. Especially during the pandemic, we have <clears throat> branding out the wazoo to sell as many immune related products as possible. People are spending so much money on products they hope are going to help them. Yeah. More often than not, they're wasting most of their money yeah. because there's a fundamental lack of information, especially in branding, which plays on ignorance. All branding plays on consumer ignorance. So where a, a favorite product says immune boost, very often the ingredients in it don't actually do anything to actually to fortify, in fact, the mechanisms of the immune system. Right. right. And part of that is because we like to boil things down in modern American consumer culture. We like to make things as simple as possible or as washed out as possible so that when a person thinks for a moment about the immune system, especially when they're looking for a product they want to buy. Mm -hmm. Very often they think of it like they would think <clears throat> of the liver or they would think of it like they would think of the kidneys or the digestive tract. You know, it's, it's a system of the body. It has its organs and it has its, its, it has its machines. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, so I need to just, you know, I just need to get the right product for that system. And since I don't know anything else as a consumer about the immune system, apart from the word and what so-and-so on this blog and what so-and-so on the newsletter posts and what the companies put right on the label, the packaging in front of me, I'm going to buy whichever one I think looks best. Okay. Which usually amounts to which one has the most ingredients. Mm -hmm. yeah and that's the gotcha backwards it's it's and it is exactly backwards yeah. so as a naturopath and as an apothecary i like to break things down in order to critically analyze them to see how they all play together not trying to parse it all out to see how mm -hmm. things work individually yeah. yeah the immune system can be described i think and even imagined by way of lines of defense. Okay. And that's how I like to teach people about the immune system, beginning with the very first line of defense in the immune system. That's nothing to do with immune cells at all. Right. It has nothing to do with lymphocytes, yeah. leukocytes, endobion. It has nothing to do with, with these organisms. It mm -hmm. has everything to do with the integument. Skin. It has to do with the skin. Okay. And the oils, and more specifically, the skin and its alien invaders mm. it has nothing to do with any of our internal internal flora at this point it has everything to do with our outward environment inhabiting our skin interesting so i and this is especially relevant in some of the households that i've been working with here locally where there is the extravagant use of essential oils for everything talking <clears throat> everything any condition of the skin well we're gonna put some essential oil on there yeah you know, we're, we're gonna clean all our surfaces with essential oils and whereas there are certain essential oils that are really useful for cleaning mm -hmm. and there are certain topical applications for certain essential oils and of course there's the raft of aromatherapeutic qualities sure. for essential oils they all share something in common they are devastating every single one of them devastating to microflora right interesting the, micro, the microflora the microfauna on the skin it recovers mm -hmm. as, as all of the microbiota does but if you are repeatedly many many times throughout the day throughout the day destroying that environment with what is caustic chemistry then you end up with a weakened first line of defense yeah. all right is, so hold on a second let uh -huh. me get this let me get this right so we're uh -huh. talking about 
essential oils that people buy like from different companies that we oh, yeah. recommend. I'm not going to mention any names here because I'm not going to endorse anybody. Uh, so the store or, you know, Walmart, wherever you go, and you don't have therapeutic no... Therapeutic grade. You have therapeutic 100% grade. therapeutic grade essential oils. That's the best stuff. It's yeah. Powerful medicine. So what, you're, what, what I'm hearing you say is that maybe we're overusing it. That maybe it's we're, it's just too much. That, no, maybe. Especially in fear. Absolutely. Okay. So I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you... I'll give you... I'll give you something to ride with. Maybe you can help me with this. Yesterday, I'm on my computer. My son comes in, turns on the diffuser, lights the incense, and then he buys this spray, starts spraying it. And I have this reaction, like an asthma attack reaction. I totally just like thought I was going to die. It's just too much. There's just too much stuff happening at one time. And I'm just like, gee, I had to go outside. <laughs> and I had right to sit there. Out, so. so that's my story. Case in point. <laughs> well, see, you know, there's a there's a lot of powerful uh medicine, a yeah, lot of powerful is. chemistry. And uh what you you reacted uh in your you know, your pulmonary system reacted to the overdose of mm -hmm. other chemistry. Imagine, let's just take one. Mm -hmm. Let's say that your primary, let's say that a virus, let's say that COVID gets mm -hmm. on the top of your hand. Mm -hmm. You're in a, a coffee shop or something, mm -hmm. or you're, let's say you're, you're just anywhere. And one of these little COVIDs in the air that, you know, the reason I wear a mask in, uh, in public is because, you know, nobody does here and that bothers me. <laughs> and uh, one of them lands on you. In all likelihood, if your flora, if your microflora on your skin is healthy, it will not survive long enough for you to get it in your eye mm -hmm. or in your nose or transfer it to your mouth somehow. Right. It will die there first. It'll be consumed. It'll be eaten because that's the reason you have all that massive amount of, of microbiota on you and in you. I mean, people don't realize, I think we've mentioned this before, if you take all the cells of the human body that are uniquely human and you give it a number, you know, it's anywhere from 85 trillion to 125 trillion yeah. cells, yeah. right? Yeah. If you take all those and you put them in a pile here, and then you take all the cells of the that are on and in our body that are not human, that belong to somebody else, some other organism, some other being, yeah. and you put them in a pile here, this pile is bigger than this one. Hmm. Yeah, we are I'm... more of that other stuff, literally, <laughs> than we are us. Why? <laughs> Begs the question, what the heck? You know, I'm a, yeah. I, I'm not a person. I'm not a human. I'm a walking garbage pile. But there's a reason for it. There's so much competition for food in the natural world. Mm -hmm. John, <laughs> or a compost heap, yeah. right? Yeah. There's so compost. much competition for food that that's exactly what happens mm -hmm. when an organism, a pathological organism, lands upon your skin. Mm -hmm. More often than not, before you have an opportunity to transfer it to your inside <laughs> it's killed it's eaten it's food yeah if you're not wiping that out all the time interesting if you're not wiping that out and we are as a culture we're so into this buying of stuff that's good for this and good for that with it, the essential oils are are a wonderful example. They're so concentrated that the chemistry that is concentrated makes them antimicrobial, mm -hmm. and you just you disbalance this pile so badly that the rest of us, you know, the, really doesn't function. Right, well. and that is not to suggest that sanitation is not an important issue. If you go mm -hmm. out into public and you know <clears throat> you're in a, a high population zone you're going where you know there will be people who don't give a crap about mm -hmm. the, about covering their face or washing or social distancing like where we live like yeah. where we live then you can pretty much guarantee you're exposing yourself to an environment where on, uh, the surfaces of which will be covered in potential viral particulates so after and we're not but, just talking coronavirus. No, we're, we're not talking, talking just we're yeah, talking we're talking things flu. that are that are a whole lot more scary yeah. sometimes than coronavirus. It, it, Interesting. It, we live in a world that's more than COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I've known that for. 
Oh yeah. A long time. So you go into one of these environments when you're finished with your business there, Mm -hmm. it is wise to wash. It is wise to wash the excess. And even if you're in a hurry and you Mm -hmm. know you're on to somewhere else, use a hand sanitizer. Yeah, do it. You know, the difference between a hand sanitizer, which is usually alcohol based and essential oils is that essential oils incorporate into the skin. Mm-hmm. Now, they, stay. they stay. They actually kill cells far longer than the blast of rapidly evaporating alcohol. Right. It actually has more impact on the tissues of the skin, essential oils do, than a, a quick rub with alcohol sanitizer does. Right? Interesting. This Interesting. is this is something that most people that I talk to do not realize about their essential oil sanitizers it's versus perfectly safe. Sanitizer. it's perfectly safe it's essential oil you can use as much as you want it's natural it's yeah. the fact of the matter is with a hand sanitizer you can wipe out just about everything mm-hmm. and it will resurface very quickly and the alcohol doesn't stay with essential oils in a sanitizer like what i've seen advertised um it, it has its antimicrobial effect for as much as an hour yeah, before longer. before it breaks down by the body. Yeah. Here's a great example. And you can do this. This is, this is super simple science that you can do at home. And all you got to do is, is uh, go to your super simple science store. Every, <laughs> everywhere has one, I'm sure. Or get on, you know, Mr. <laughs> Google Pants and buy some off the internet. Take a Petri dish with some nutrient auger in there, just like we all were you know, so in high school biology, yeah, right? And you can buy them that are already inoculated with bacteria, mm-hmm. and so you know you're ready to go, harmless but visible bacteria mm-hmm. to do the mm-hmm. test. Put a drop of alcohol in the middle of that, and record the result. You will see as the alcohol spreads out that the bacteria that comes in contact with that alcohol dies. Mm-hmm. And then you can measure the time that it takes for the bacteria to grow back into that nutrient auger. And it, it's, you know, that alcohol has gone fast because mm-hmm. it kills. And it's, as you say, it, it evaporates, evaporates very quickly. And it mm-hmm. takes some of the water. Mm-hmm. But you put some tea tree oil, for example, melaleuca oil, one drop in the center of that. And you could be days before bacteria, the simple bacteria that lives on your skin, for example, mm-hmm. pseudomona or in the soil. It could be days before that is able to survive in that nutrient auger. So wow. let's take that to the skin. <laughs> I wash my hands. Our first line of defense, remember, yeah. skin is the first skin. line of defense when it comes to sure. any pathogen, not just, you know, COVID. Yeah. Any pathogen. At least until I'm, at, so I'm at Walmart and I push the cart and some nasty, disgusting, sick person pushed the cart before me and it didn't get washed. Okay, so now... Right. No matter what the disease is, I'm in trouble mm-hmm. because my penchant is to. Right, right, right. You know, we're doing this all the time mm-hmm. and we're swallowing all the time. So I wash with a hand sanitizer. I do my duty, my business in Walmart, pushing my cart. When I'm all done, load up the car and I wash again. The microbiota that's on my arms, my shoulders, my arms, my armpits, the rest of my body will come back into that area of the skin within minutes mm. within minutes interesting i do that with essential oil it will be hours mm-hmm. and so now i've risked that first line of mm-hmm. defense for hours after that instead of just minutes it, it's just, it seems dumb you know this is super simple science and uh, the, these are the kinds of things we can do at home to prove to ourselves that what the talking heads are telling us in many cases, is not true. There is a good reason to wash with a hand sanitizer. Mm-hmm. And just because essential oils are antimicrobial does not make them a good hand sanitizer. No, in yeah. fact, your your very simple soap, your hot water mm-hmm. and simple just soap warm water even is as effective as essential oils. Mm-hmm. And come and is generally better for the skin anyway, because many of our soaps have conditioners in them right. and moisturizers in them anyway. So if someone is not going to break away from 
using their essential oil hand sanitizer, which is usually a combination of thieves oil or, you know, any of those four or five main ones. Tea tree is the big big favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, If they're not going to go away from that, make sure that they wash their hands of the essential oil after they've treated, after they've anointed their skin. Wash it off. So apply it, let it do its job for a couple of minutes, and then wash it off. And I'm going to say with dish soap, take the oils off. Most of the essential oils don't do what their herbal counterparts do anyway, contrary to popular belief about essential oils. So you don't need most of that in Mm -hmm. your skin for as long as it will absolutely stay there. So you can totally sanitize with potent essential oils. Just get it off your skin afterward, then follow with a very decent, very healthy, natural conditioner like a lotion. Yeah, or just just some olive oil. Or even just some olive oil. I don't like olive oil. Well, people do, and I do. (laughs) Well, I'm finding this very, 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 very fascinating because I know for a long time, uh, essential oil was like all the rage. Oh, it's it, still it, 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 it's yeah. just like uh, you know, yeah. it's like I mean, we even used them in the past. You know, we had uh, through the oh, yeah. essential oil company, we used we used them in the sweat lodge. I think from time to time we would use them. I still use them. Still do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we always yeah. have essential oil around. They have their perfect uses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This just isn't one of them. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's interesting. It's interesting that maybe people are just getting a little bit confused about you know, how to use things properly. Plus, you know, a marketing lot, a lot and confusing. marketing from the companies to going, hey, well, if you do this, you do that. You're going to do that and do this, you know, yeah. you're going to get it's this result. Panic, Chief. Yeah. It's panic. Mm-hmm. If there's mm-hmm. that fear element that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. People are buying into more branding, more propaganda mm-hmm. now than they have for the past 50 years prior, regardless of the fads that cycle in and out, like the, the Candida Cleanse fad is cycling back in. And it will every 10 mm-hmm. years or so, there will be a Candida Cleanse bad yeah unfortunately Um, unfortunately yeah but but in time of pandemic or crisis of any kind people become intrinsically uh desperate for something that they can do something that gives them some peace of mind some security they need to have more confidence in the systems already in place this this uh it, it it points to a deep level of personal insecurity on a national scale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't, number one, they're <clears throat> ignorant of the defense mechanisms in place, but have little confidence in this, this community's ability to actually respond to something like COVID. And right. so COVID being the new demon, mm-hmm. you need the exorcist to get the demon out. And so you go to the company with the best, brightest immune boost label. Right. You get the exorcist that gets the demon out. And that's that's really the approach that I'm seeing on a consumerist level. Mm-hmm. The next line of defense that we have is interstitial. It is the fluids of the body beginning with the respiratory fluids. Right. The mm-hmm. deli- the mucosal lining, the mucosal cells inside the respiratory system, inside the sinuses, inside the mouth. This is where things get really dicey because now these pathogens have access to the cells they require for replication. Right. There's not a single cell on our skin that COVID can use mm-hmm. functionally to replicate itself. It has to target specific cells that do not inhabit the integument, must get inside sure. in order to embed and replicate. And it's the same with the flu. You don't mm-hmm. have a flu outbreak on the skin. Mm-hmm. The flu outbreaks inside and this moves to our next line of defense those soldiers that our body manufactures with that patrol the fluids of our bodies and that and in that case we're talking about lymphocytes and leukocytes we're talking about those cells specifically manufactured to do the work of cleaning up garbage and hunting down dangerous pathogens right which is why the natural world becomes as creative as it does in hiding and sneaking around our natural immune response, our natural immune system, because our cells are really, really smart. Mm -hmm. And in order for these viruses and these bacteria to survive, they've got to be as equally smart or more or more. And in a lot of cases, they are more intelligent 
because many of our immune cells are not generational cells. They are not reproducing cells. So, for example, the neutrophil is a leukocyte. It is, uh, it is manufactured in the bone marrow like so many others of our white blood cells are. But it doesn't take its programming until that cell in its, in its uh, pupil form is passed through the spleen the vessels and the chambers surrounding the spleen, where there's a burst, there is an environment, a chemical environment that triggers a transformation in that leukocyte and it mm. becomes the neutrophil white blood cell. Complete with its genetic programming, it is suddenly autonomous and on the hunt. And the spleen's not the only organ, but it right. is the major one. And I mean, we can live one. without it. Yeah. So we can still produce neutrophils, but when you have a spleen, it's it's making it's the place where neutrophils are programmed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that yeah and it's like cloud Byler said there's a number of places where the neutrophil is programmed the spleen yeah. is the primary location when while you have the spleen if if you have if you don't have a spleen then what what happens if in that you don't have secondary? it what if you don't have it there are multiple places in the body yeah. the okay. neutrophil white blood cell or what, the mast cell that will become mm -hmm. a neutrophil Okay. will be programmed. It just sometimes takes a little bit longer gotcha. than it would if it was just rushing through the vessels surrounding the spleen. Right. Now, once it's been programmed, this little hunter seeker has a database of enemies. It has a library of enemies that its, it's intelligence can recognize. It's it, a memory. It has a yeah. memory. And for those things that it doesn't remember, it has a companion set of cells with a much deeper database. Oof. Now, the trade-off here is that the B cells and the T cells are non-motile. They don't move themselves. They're literally the libraries and factories that the neutrophil requires to generate the weapons needed against pathogen. So the neutrophils trade off an extensive database of enemies or the ability to hunt those enemies down. Right. You yeah. cannot successfully fight off an attack without this relationship between these manufactured cells. Now, here's the rub. They do not pass on their genetic material from one cell to another. These cells, when they're done, die. They're done. They okay. are re and their material is recycled into basic amino acids the body uses for other things. So in order for the, our immune system to learn uh, and to learn and adapt to a pathogen, it's usually in the midst and in recovery of the infection itself. That's right. The pathogen itself has already begun adapting to its new environment from the moment it begins replicating or reproducing in vast numbers. We're talking billions of individual cells all working on the same problem like a, a mastermind principle, finding out how to survive inside the human body. Our mm. body has to catch up and that takes time. So when a person is taking something that's supposed to boost the immune system, these are some of those mechanisms that, are, that need to be considered. Is the substance that you're taking either going to provide building blocks to support your army or is it going to alter the environment and make it easier for your army to move and operate? Or does it alter your environment to restrict or reduce the efficiency of the pathogen's ability to survive, the adaptability of the pathogen? These are the three main functions that need to be addressed when you're talking about boosting the immune system which is kind of a misnomer anyway because you really can't boost the immune system it's a dumb term it's a dumb term it's a relatively new term too the yeah boost, yeah boost so the boost your immune system so why would even why would we even say that why would that even marketing marketing, marketing. it so sounds and looks so good you just boost your immune system to me it doesn't it's like if it sounds to me like you're taking your duct tape <laughs> and you're taking a big booster rocket and you're keeping it onto your rocket so you can get higher and bigger and faster. Well, you know, uh, this is health. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. You know, <laughs> it's bigger 
higher, faster. You can't care. Yeah, you can't make you can't make your neutrophils that are already in your body actually work faster. They're going to work the speed that they work. They're going to move around the body as quickly as they do. They're going to live as long as they do. You can help the body, however, manufacture healthier neutrophils and more and more of them that's that's not boosting the that in a sense that would be boosting the immune system in the fact that it's modulating the immune response turning up up the number of cells and that gives us an edge on the rapidly reproducing or replicating pathogens that are trying to make us their new habitat okay that modulation yeah modulation immunomodulation modulation it yeah, sounds better. Boost, boosting your bomb, boosting sounds better than a modulation, I guess. That's probably it like does, it. and it fits on a label this big. Well, yes. I, you know, it, it, modulation <laughs> has too many syllables for Americans. I mean, we've got a we've got a, fig, a character limit, right? We can't we can't mean that as well as boost. You know, because I've even, seen, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've even seen BST to stand for boost. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. really? Wow. Yeah, it, you can't really do that with modulate up. Well, yeah. This is really, uh, really fascinating. <laughs> yeah, to some people, this may seem like splitting hairs. Oh, you're mm. just battling semantics here. And I was like, okay, granted. But the, the issue is, um, it's, it's it boils down to operation what, and function. Yeah, what, what are you is. putting in your body? Is what you're spending your, in the case of most families in the United States right now during the pandemic, or at least many of them, are you spending your strained economic resources? Mm on products that aren't doing what they claim to be doing. Okay. That is a burden on the community locally. That's a burden on the individual and their family. If they're the breadwinner, it's a burden on a society that is dependent on consumer products to get by. That is American culture. So I'll take, uh, for example, elderberry is Mm -hmm. the most popular, most common ingredient on in immune boosting formulas and elder is amazing the berry the leaf the stem we don't use the root but we use just about every other part if it's used correctly and Mm -hmm. in proper dosage it is fantastic it's freaking amazing why is it in an immune boosting product Uh, yeah and why is it why is sugar why is it the sugar syrup Mm -hmm. of elderberry That is the product that's supposed to be boosting your immune system when it does not. It does not boost the immune system. In fact, excessive use of elder in any of its forms effectively suppresses the immune system. Really? Wow. And and it all boils down to its mechanism of action. It's not immune boosting. I'm just like, right now, my mind's going, what? (laughs) You could take elderberry. Elderberry, (laughs) yeah. And it's very, very useful. It is so powerful. As but if you use it wrong, it can mm-hmm. have the opposite effect. So the two main mechanisms. Phrases. Uh-huh. <laughs> Elderberry. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, so the two main effects of elder, either in leaf and berry, and we prefer the leaf and stem we do. over the berries. Yeah. Um, but the, the, two, the main mechanisms are it's distinctly antiviral. If it's, if it's formulated properly, if it's extracted properly, but it also contains certain antioxidants, certain chemical compounds that actually help mitigate the release of cytokine chemistry, which many viruses trigger in order to negatively impact the immune system and the surrounding tissues. The cytokine storm weakens natural defense against the Mm -hmm. virus, but it's not a, a storm released by the virus. It, or a viruses and bacteria. No, it is a response that they have adapted to cause the body to make. Uh, it's the immune it's system. The immune that causes system that the causes storm. the storm. Really, they have learned how to trigger this response. Now, the reason for a cytokine storm is be, is because when a bacteria embeds itself in a cell, there are mm-hmm. only two responses. The body has two. The the immune system has two responses. Either kill the cell to expose the bacteria or virus, in which case there's a histamine response, or put it with chemotherapy, mm-hmm. aka cytokine storm, which <clears throat> eviscerates whatever it touches. Yeah, it, it, it actually, the, the storm itself in its, in its effect on the human body 
is involved in the in and is used by the virus that in this case mm -hmm. covid to mm -hmm. get out of the body mm -hmm. it causes the cells to actually fill so much with with fluid that they rupture they explode yeah um that is how the, <clears throat> these viruses mm -hmm. have to get out of the body that's part of the that's part of the plan part of the life right. cycle so at a certain point in its life cycle it will cause you to explode elder mm -hmm helps to prevent that from happening so your immune system can bring the infection under right. control before you explosion. Right? Yeah, I don't want to explode. This is a, it's yeah. a good it's a good thing to use. But if you use too much, then you run the risk of not having enough cytokine activity to kill the virus. So there's a balance there. There's a so real balance there. Where is the balance? How do you find the balance? You call us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And but where can we find you? Where can we find we're making, you? <laughs> one of the points we're making is that you do not have this effect with the elder berry. Mm -hmm. No. You, no. The only part of the elder berry that provides the chemistry that, that provides the, that, that creates the effect that we want or enhances the effect that we want is in the seed. And mm. uh, they don't put the seed in the sugar syrup of elderberry that's in everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're taking sugar syrup of elderberry that you put on your pancakes and they're dehydrating that mm -hmm. and putting it in capsules with other immune boosters like vitamin C and garlic. Mm -hmm. It's doing absolutely nothing. And you're paying a hefty premium price for that. Nothing. Yeah. Wow. The, and the, and there's the other, the other ingredient that I was going to bring up. That's so common in immune boosting formulas, garlic, garlic. or allicin isolate, yeah. which is the volatile chemical that they like to isolate out and, add to products garlic <laughs> in its dry form if you're taking a garlic powder supplement stop <laughs> if you're just taking the spice from the grocery store it's a flavorant at that point well, you eat it for that purpose yeah but... but not don't take it in a capsule that's a waste of garlic put it in your food yeah fresh garlic or rather the garlic juice the volatile chemistry Mm -hmm. contained in the live garlic is where the medicine lies it's where the allicin is contained it's the part that makes you cry it's gone mm -hmm. if it's in dry form there's no allicin in dry garlic powder so that's a useless product that doesn't do anything for the immune system garlic doesn't do anything for the immune system anyway it's antimicrobial right it's an antibiotic it's an antibiotic it kills stuff and it's not selective it doesn't select your staph infection or your E. coli infection over the rest of your digestive flora. If you take enough of it to have a positive effect on an infection, you will also have a negative effect on your friendly flora. Yeah, you're, mm -hmm. you're temporarily pro it's providing a, a very bad care. environment for life. Yeah. Interesting. So, early. so you can go way overboard with allicin products but it'll be found in your immune boosting Everything. supplement yeah. interesting so the other one that pop the the uh, ingredients that truly do boost the immune system are the building block ingredients such as your vitamin c your vitamin d3 your your manganese your magnesium zinc. your zinc your calcium you know these the your, beta glucan carbohydrates from from your tiaga your reishi right. your chaga mm -hmm. your turkey tail you know these 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 are compounds that actually provide building blocks for the manufacture of the cells you need or triggers for or the triggers an ex, ex, uh, an increase manufacture right. as is the case with beta glucans which tricked your body into thinking you've got an infection you don't have. Hence, an explosion of neutrophil and macrophage white blood cells. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember what he was saying about the body thing, having to catch up. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, if you give your body substances that, that give it the impression that it's sick, but you're not really sick, mm -hmm. that's the bookends, mm -hmm. it's going to work to catch up. And in catching up, guess what happens? It catches up. It catches up. up. It does yeah. its better in the uh the <clears throat> that's a boost that's that's a booster yeah. rocket duct taped onto your yeah <laughs> the very same cells that are responsible for lysing of tissues which is what causes the release of fluids in our sinus cavities and swelling in our joints during an infection 
are the very same cells are responsible for the antihistamine risk chemistry. Right. They release some of them release one, some of them release a different kind. So if you have a big enough army, a big enough crew handling your situation, mm -hmm. your body will be managing the situation that much better. Yeah, they'll be balanced. They'll be that. balanced out. Yeah. Which leads us to the third, and in one of my opinion, the next single most important line of defense, the gut, mm -hmm. our gut flora. Now that's not to suggest <clears throat> that gut flora will, will prevent us in any way from catching a cold. The gut flora does not do that. But here's what the gut flora does. The gut flora is the training ground right. for everything else our body has to deal with on a mm -hmm. pathogenic level. We have to remember, even our friendly flora were dangerous pathogens at one point in our life cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. Every single friendly bacteria, every single bacteriophage virus that has inhabited our gut began as an enemy of the state before it was assimilated. Yeah. Interesting. All of our immune cells, all of them pass through the lymphatic tissues, the lymphatic vessels, surround and the blood vessels surrounding the gut, the intestines, yeah. the large and small intestines, all of them do this. None of them escape. They all go there. Every single wow. one. Think of that as exercise. You are exercising the muscles, the training, the competence of your immune system. Not because your gut flora is going to fight off the disease, but because if your gut flora is active, diverse, mm -hmm. and constantly having to be regulated by your body's immune system, then the immune system itself has more information and is up to speed. It has to be diverse. Current it pathogens. has to be diverse in its response. It has to be constantly diverse in its response. And what that does is it it puts you in a much better position when you are attacked by a pathogen. Mm -hmm. the The immune system is capable of rapid response if your gut flora is balanced and diverse. If it's not, your immune system is automatically much less able to respond because it simply doesn't have the competence. Right. Medical profession talks about immune competence mm -hmm. and immune competence comes from the gunk in your intestines. Now I can hear- It is about shit. Yeah, always. Oh. <laughs> La poo. La poo. La poo. La poo. I can hear the thumbs tapping on their screens now. No, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong. Probiotics. <laughs> probiotics. <laughs> Um, and this can cause as much stress oh, as yeah. it can cause relief. And here again, we have a panic, a fear response involved. But there's got to be some product. Well, literally, it's food. And it's the most neglected food in the modern diet. And it is so easy. It is so easy. Oh, my God. And so beneficial. Like kimchi. Kraut. So, <laughs> Fermented foods Kraut, of mm -hmm. all kinds. Ferments. When, when uh, masters and teachers of health are talking about live food, usually they're talking about raw food mm -hmm. or in the menha peli, an apothecary, we're talking about actually live food as in it's got critters in it. Lots of critters. Lots and lots of critters. It's alive. It's filled with our little brothers. It's filled with the, the spirits of life, which are will exercise and train our body on how to handle this environment yeah it's immune system weightlifting and university of Umi of immune system and <laughs> you know advanced technical studies of immune system <laughs> and yeah. it's all happening down there and it is mm -hmm. so inexpensive uh that's the thing right there how are we gonna get through this pandemic i can barely work a job these are the thoughts going through our mind and like how can i finish do my job mm -hmm. at home it, or am i working a job that can be done at home what if everything gets locked down again? What am I going to do about my health if I can't buy my supplements? Mm -hmm. Make it. Make them. Keep yeah. your scraps, vegetables, and sprout them. Let me show you how we do this. Okay. I got one right here. You know we're making pottery. Jesu yes. and I are making pottery. Well, this is just a simple crock. It looks like a cookie jar, right? Yes. Uh, pretty lid. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> this is a gallon. And it, it this is a, a sauerkraut maker. And it has a, it, an amazing, you know, 
You glaze the inside so it's easy to clean. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get all garbagey. Sure. But it has a ring here. And mm -hmm. in the old days, most of your your cro your uh, crocs either had just you know a top mm -hmm. without a ring, or they had a ring and a heavy lid. <laughs> Usually a, a round, you know, very very smooth globe type lid. And there's a reason for that. You put your waste vegetable in here, and it's not just cabbage. Okay, if people think of sauerkraut and they think cabbage. Well, that's the dumbest, <laughs> ugliest tasting sauerkraut there is. You know? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. See dumb, your face, dumb, man. Dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> take, take your base of your of your cabbage because it gives you a good cab a good base. And throw all, I like to throw a whole bunch of stir fry vegetables in there. Yeah. Throw Probably it in there in the brine. And, and and to to tell you to show you how easy it is, you remember that um ceviche that you made for us when we yes. were at your house? Yes. It's a very similar sort of liquid that you All put right. in. Stuff. Hold, pump the brakes for a second. That way people can catch up. <laughs> so, so we got a we got a gallon crock here that you make uh, mm -hmm. on your facility. You yeah. actually sell these, right? Yeah. Well, you can you can order one and we'll make one for sure. you. Interesting. So what you're saying Anybody? is you're going to be taking the scraps like uh, vegetables and stuff, not necessarily yeah. meats and stuff, but more like. Carrot peeling, celery peeling. You're okay. gonna put it inside this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, 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 I'm gonna admit that in the old days you put everything in there, and you okay. can, and you do. But we're just gonna talk about vegetables right now because we don't want people to freak out, you know, and send you white powder and envelopes to your house. <laughs> so you're making humus then? Yeah. <laughs> so Ferment. Uh, Bill Mollison, the, the father. Yes. The prophet of permaculture wrote a book about ferments mm -hmm. and everything edible under the sun can be fermented and you do it in something as simple as this. Now you put it in there, you put your water and your salt, your brine, just like you did with your, sure. mm -hmm. with your ceviche, probably not your lime or your lemon until you're done because that mm -hmm. will stop microbial mm -hmm. action. You right. put it in there and you pack it down. Now in Europe, they made these straight top without the little rim because mm -hmm. they put a weight on they put some big yeah. cabbage leaves and they put a weight they put a dish in a brick or something like that because they lived in the barn but in asia and in you know where they're much more sophisticated they designed a water rim and you put water in there and you put the suction on mm -hmm. and when that water begins to go down you pour a little on the top Mm -hmm. And it just keeps it nice and sealed. And what that does is the probiotic, the natural probiotic that is all over that food, mm -hmm. which is leftovers, and the fact that you've put them in there, you, you have inoculated yeah. them with your own probiotic, mm -hmm. everything on your body, and it rots. Okay, that sounds terrible. But let me tell you, as soon as you swallow something, it rots. Yes. What's going on in your intestines is right. rot. That's how we get food out of food. This doesn't act, this this rots and preserves. And none of the pathological organisms that are capable of making you stick sick survive this. Mm -hmm. But guess what does survive this? Because it's specifically the way our intestines digest food. Yeah. All of your probiotic survives this. Then when it's done, uh, you know, there's seven day, there's nine day, there's 40 day, there's mm -hmm. 300. I don't know if there's 300. I don't know days. if it goes that far. Yeah, no, yeah, it's thousand, thousand year eggs. You get the <laughs> thousand year eggs in these. You know, you take those out and you eat them and you are actually dosing yourself with better and more diverse probiotic mm -hmm. than any chemical lab any or any biological lab can produce for you. And it is that easy. You sit this on the counter and you watch it for a few days and then you add it to everything else mm -hmm. you eat when it's done. It's it's that simple. And it's super, super cheap. The investment is really in a pot, a pot. Yeah. You know, and because you can't go down to Walmart and buy one of these, nobody has them. And because Except for nobody you. has them. Except for you guys. Well, yeah. Well, he has to make one. We can't find... I mean, the ones yeah. we can find online from, you know, I, I, I want to spend sellers. Yeah. Do I want to spend 
$400 for a gallon rock? Why no? That's mm -hmm. crazy. You know, but I had to make them. I had to learn how to make them and start making them. And the minute that we did and we start making the food, you know, we now have a far, a vastly superior probiotic. Mm -hmm. And it's constant. We get to do it at home. And it's highly satisfying. Highly yeah. satisfying. Yeah. Now, if you don't like to eat sauerkraut straight, nobody does because, you know, we like sweet. Well, I like sauerkraut straight, but, you know, that's me. <laughs> I like it. Um, I, I found little that I that I don't like sour, the homemade kraut on. Yeah. Anything you Unless would, it's like brownies. Anything you, you don't would put kraut on brownies. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or pancakes. Yeah. No, it's funny. It's funny that you say this. And I've noticed this when I like when I eat kimchi. I love kimchi. Okay, kimchi it's is cabbage. kraut. It's kraut. It's kraut. It's just, yeah. but it's spiced up. But when I eat yeah. that, I feel a lot better. Like I don't cough as much. Nothing. My whole body is just. But then when I got off of it, it's just like every. You know, it's just like I go right back to whatever the state I was. Why? I I don't know. It's just it's kind of weird. It's because I don't oh. eat enough of it over a period of time. I guess. Yeah, that that wasn't my why. Why do you get off of it? <laughs> oh yeah, good. Point. Doesn't make sense. But yeah, so basically, we're, really works. we're basically we're composting, right? So we we're are, eating the compost, yeah. we're eating yeah. the hemosol, what they use in the garden. We use it in our garden, right? Mm -hmm. So why, if it's good for our garden, it has to be good for us. Is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. Now this is a this is a more controlled setup. You're actually duplicating what your own mm -hmm. intestines do, and you're inoculating with your own probiotic. I defy any probiotic manufacturer in Chicago to know what probiotic I need. And to mm -hmm. be able to get that from their soil in Chicago, I need what is here mm -hmm. to optimize my immune response and to keep it educated and yeah. competent. I need my own neighborhood probiotic. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the simplest things in the world to do. Now we can, we, we know stuff. We can teach any individual mm -hmm. yes. who wants to know how to, how to extract the right herbs mm -hmm. to get the right chemistry. You know, we say, call us. And that's true. You should, but call us and we will teach you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the time or you don't think, you know, you don't have the competence or you just mm -hmm. plain are not interested in doing anything for yourself, we'll make it for you at a cost because we like to, you we, know, we spend prefer, money. We prefer to teach people how to make it. But we do, you know, sure. if, I can, if I can make you a crock and teach you how to make probiotic, mm -hmm. I would much rather do that than have you go down and spend $80 a month on a bottle of probiotic that you can't afford. Right. And that is insufficient to produce a competent mm -hmm. immune response. I mean, you look at it. Why are people taking probiotic right now? If we had not said in this, in this context, the probiotic is a line of defense, people wouldn't know that it's part of your immune system. Right. I mean, who yeah. knew that your probiotic, that's for digestion, isn't it? <laughs> that's, your di that's your digestive system, not your immune system. Well, that's we get culture. that a lot. Now. <laughs> no, that's our culture, especially it, by ex from experts. We oh get my that gosh! <laughs> well, that's dumb. <laughs> oh I'm my god! Not in the same system. Uh huh. <laughs> Comedy <laughs> hour here. <laughs> I mean, it enslaves me when you when you go and you talk to a general practitioner, mm -hmm. and they don't know what's going on in the lymphatics around the gut because they're not an internal medicine specialist. Oh, good excuse. You know, I go to my internal or my mom would go to her internist to get her, you know, her insulin, mm -hmm. not knowing. And that internist did not know anything about the lymphatics of the, you know, the gut and what its purpose was and what it would do for insulin balance your body and and insulin resistance mm -hmm. it tells your body but you have to go to an internist to know that so mm. they don't know specialist it specialist for everything so yeah. where do people find you guys how do they find you they find him <laughs> okay how do they find jonathan <laughs> give us a website or wherever you go a telephone number or something we can post yeah i'll do that i'll send you a website okay guys i want it now well the Oops. web the website for the pottery is it's kind of long it's the mind of a leaf 101 okay. all right dot com the mind of a leaf 101 all right dot com simple right yeah 101 it's the first course you would take in college sure yeah 
and Jeshua manages that. And he's got a Facebook page where he posts a lot of the projects that he's working on that he and Podfather are working on with the pottery. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. Instagram too. And uh, for the classes, for people who want to take classes, just we send them to namenhot.org. We have okay. a seminary page for that. Very and good. they can actually, they, we have a breakdown on what classes. We, we teach our herbology, our home-based herbology, apothecary mm -hmm. style per the medicine wheel. Yeah, and it sure. is home based. And it is home based. It's, it's not, not advanced master herbalism. Yeah, it's it is just not, very practical, down to earth. Yeah, it's not a comprehensive kitchen. herbology course for practitioners yeah. to make you a practitioner. It is designed to make you competent in your home. Mm -hmm. that's okay, gotcha. And, and to me, that's more important than going to see this master herbalist who can look at a book and tell you what's good for what. Right. We'll send you to the same books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how to use the books to teach you right. how to, <laughs> we'll to make the medicine well this has been really really fascinating because i i learned something new today a lot of, a lot of new things today and i learned a lot from it, both please? of you i learned a lot from both of you over the years and taught myself some things over the years but it's been very fascinating i've been really curious and and the the fun the finale was actually really good about the i'm still curious about the pot you know and and <laughs> And what what goes inside of it, and how you activate Isn't it? You say like, though? but uh, I guess I have to. I guess Jeff I have has to. a funny and Jeff has a funny response. He has an Instagram, and he's posting on Instagram all the time. It's sure. the mind of the leaf, yeah, on Instagram. And um, he gets he gets a lot of questions about, hey, send us a recipe. Will you mm -hmm. post a recipe? And he's like, yes, not to the recipe, but to what you put in it. Put everything in it. Put it you know, okay. So, so last week. Um, we had bought a bunch of stuff for some salads. I always try to force yeah. force feed greens to my kids. Mm -hmm. It hardly ever works, but I try anyway. And so we had things like carrots and we had some cabbage that was it's going to turn. It hadn't turned. It wasn't sludge yet. Had some nice red peppers. But we had some peppers. peppers. Yeah. We had baby carrots that didn't get eaten. Yeah, we sure. had we had some peelings and trimmings and celery and that sort of thing. And lettuce. The lettuce typically, when it goes bad, it goes bad fast. Yeah, and it turns it turns it, it will. Fast. Yeah, it, it will, will turn really fast. Fine. And so you, we were like, yeah, it's such a shame to throw this stuff out. Jesha comes over and gathers it all up. He washed in the it pot. First. He washed it he washed into the it. pot. It went. Yeah. And about four days later, we're eating some amazing red yeah crowd. it's four to seven days and it is yeah. it is colorful it is tasty it's spicy mm -hmm. it's a good spicy you put it's, some other some put some spice in there yeah like you know it's, it's more kimchi good. than anything and you can do that with with any of the vegetables mm -hmm. and and have something that's actually different every single time um, this is something that our grandparents did all the mm -hmm. time because of a lack of refrigeration this is the thing that right. you did with a lot of your leftovers. So true. some people will say, well, well, maybe that's why they didn't live very long. That's not true at all. <laughs> no. This this part of sanitation is very sanitary. <clears throat> um, so, you know, the, the bad bacteria, the pathogenics simply do not survive. They're literally right. cooked out mm -hmm. and digested out of what you end up eating. What you end up eating is is enhanced in its in its digestibility mm -hmm. and because of the the massive increase of protein based organisms that are now in it you also have a whole different table of nutrients mm -hmm. from you know four or five tablespoons of something that you throw on a sandwich right wow. anything you'll put ketchup or mustard or mayonnaise or relish or anything you put any of that on throw some of this in there and you've just taken your probiotic for the day yeah and it's made at home and it keeps your immune system hopping because every time you introduce a dose of probiotic organisms your immune system has to manage the assimilation of those organisms because otherwise it's war yep world war gut over and over and over again now yeah. with pro quo with pro quo you got to give yourself some time to work into it if this is brand new to you your gut flora is i mean it just sucks it'll go wow it's gonna go yeah. it's like what is the hell it's, is that <laughs> gonna, trying to kill me Iggy. It, it could be it could be noisy at night uh -huh. oh yeah that's okay don't worry about it it's all right yeah. because, because these are live things and just sure. like 
any other live thing, they respire. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's there, there is that quid pro quo. There is a, it's not an illness. You're not going to be sick. It's uh -huh. just that you've got to balance. Yeah. And also for, for people who are on a standard American diet or, and trying to get off of it, or for people who are really hard, rigorous vegans who don't eat a lot of fermented foods, for right. example, they uh, imagine just for reference and and we parents can relate to this imagine the infant that is is being is having food introduced to it it's just starting to get no, used to solid like foods that. every time they nibble on something different they have an explosion of the diaper every yeah. single time without fail it's mm -hmm. a perfectly natural response to new items the gut is inoculated with strange organisms that have to do a little battle and then the immune system brings everything back into check and those organisms adapt to their new environment and become part of the natural ecosystem right. see that's the point is that it is exactly trying the point. to enhance and truly boost mm -hmm. the immune system by giving it some exercise again and by optimizing the nutrition that it needs mm -hmm. so it's a it, it's a major major important thing if people want to get a handle on this at home they need to take it on at home and yeah. quit relying on outside sources so much. Trust no corporation you know, to care about your health enough to give you a good product. Yeah, if you go to a corporation, know what you're buying. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. specifically, it's a you know, when I go to a grocery store, I pretty much habit inhabit the outside mm -hmm. and make retaliatory strikes to in you know in the aisles into the into the center of the for certain things that i know i need so sure. gotta have ginger there, there's no toilet paper near the cabin so you know you gotta go in and get that so that's the way you need to to think about this know what you're doing and quit relying on, for every little thing that you think you're entitled to quit relying on somebody else you're not entitled to good health you mm. got to damn work for it. Sure. And it's worth working for. But, you know, little flower child, little snowflake, you got it, it's it's work and you got to take yeah. your time and it, it it may surpass your character limit. Mm. So, so is this something you eat every day? When we have it. Yeah. <laughs> it takes yeah. about what, seven days to cure, right? That, that, five that's pretty much yeah five to seven yeah. is the earliest the best the best it's, 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 i'm gonna be putting all that in the little jar everybody's gonna be like what are you doing oh we're gonna now, have, yeah eat this we used to do this in in gallon jars uh -huh. and and iggy it's ugly yeah <laughs> you don't want you don't want to you don't want to be able to you don't want to yes you want to see you want to see mm, yeah the, the can, can you, you wanna, can you use a jar though can you use a jar it's, you can it's, it's, risk. Yeah, it's, it's more difficult it is because um, you don't have a natural seal with a jar because you have to be constantly breaking the seal right, in order you have for to fermentation to happen. Yeah. So this this kind of like kombucha. Well, yeah. it kind of is, and what happens is that all fermentation passes through this. I got to do a little demonstration here. I'm all right, not, here I'm we go. Enjoying this. <laughs> do a little demonstration. All fermentation passes through um, the production of alcohol. Mm -hmm. well, you know, first of all, you're going to have carbonation. Sure. Before you get to alcohol, you're going to have carbonation, right. and that's the production of carbon dioxide. And the great thing about it uh, is that the lid is heavy. It's built mm -hmm. heavy for a purpose, mm -hmm. and that water seal is sealing, but it's not on there like a jar lid. So when the carbonation rises, Goodness. it goes. It releases. It goes just like we do. Uh -huh. You know. <laughs> It parks. It burps. The contamination mm -hmm. window, however, is very, very narrow because yeah, we have gaseous ex, ex we have gaseous escape. It doesn't but move not a lot of exchange. It, you know, it, it barely moves. Mm -hmm. And what happens then is the carbon dioxide is released and the next stage can take place, and that's alcohol. Mm -hmm. The next stage after that is acetic acid, and that's where you have your your uh, your actual sauerkraut. But here, listen. Without that, I mean, that's exactly what happens in a in a gallon jar as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is, you can't you can't really nicely seal it. And if you do put a lid on there, your yeah. jar will explode. Yeah, you have to yeah. you have to really babysit crowd in the jar. Yeah, and that's where they use. That, 
That's why they use a little they use a little tube. Right. To, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, the your beer makers and your wine makers mm-hmm. will have a, a seal for that purpose. Same thing happening here. This actually inspired that process. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more it, it's more efficient and more convenient to do the other way with barrels and big things mm-hmm. like that. But this is a is a perfect method, and it's great for the home because you don't have to worry so much in a jar. You don't have to babysit it at all. Yeah. In a jar, yeah. it, you know, more often than not, you're you're going to mess up and you're going to throw the whole thing away. Now, if you just use this, he's so proud of me. I love yeah. it. It's one of the prettiest ones I've done. If you use this with, with juice or with tea and some honey, mm-hmm. you make kombucha. Yeah. Mm. It, it just perfectly makes it. The difference between this and a kombucha uh, jar is that they put a little spigot at the bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that you can pour it out. Mm-hmm. I don't need that. I, I use a ladle. <laughs> but it's, a, it's exactly the same principle, only it's with fruits and juices and peas and okay, that. Cool. Yeah. So this you got a you got a double whammy there. Sauerkraut, kombucha. It, it's yeah. actually pop. You know, that's all kombucha is. is yeah. pop. Yeah. Probiotic pop, right? Pop. Yeah, it's it's the carbonation. You you take and use it before it goes to alcohol. Yeah. So my admonition for people when they want to boost their immune system is concentrate more on food. And if you want to, if you want to be prepared with medicines for the event for the event of infection, which is smart, learn how to make the medicine right, as opposed to buying it from some corporation that's just going to give you pills. Because wow. you can learn how to be very precise. You can learn sure. how you can learn how to make a formula that does manage the cytokine storm yeah. or interfere with a viral a virus ability to replicate and to protect the cells that are being damaged cells that are being damaged these are the three areas that we need to to address when when stopping covid and you know, mm-hmm. I, I could care less yeah. if anybody kills a covid virus stop it in three points of its in its life cycle mm-hmm. and you save your life you don't end up going to the hospital right you'll be sick but you will not suffer like these poor souls who are mm-hmm. dying around the world right but if you're training up and, and if you're not destroying your first line of defense with needlessly potent chemistry, yeah. then, you know, that goes a long way to keeping yourself safe. And anything you can do to reinforce and fortify a sense of security within oneself leaves, it opens the mind to more rational thinking, more critical thinking, which helps us cope with crisis in general on a far better level. Yeah, like here. The a lot of people panic when they think of this vaccine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you understand the real workings of the immune system, you settle down, you calm mm-hmm. down because you know that if your job requires the vaccine, your employer you require requires the vaccine, you can go get the vaccine. But what you're doing at home will see to it that you do not have those horrible side effects that are possible. Mm-hmm. You know, the lasting side effects of vaccination that are so scary for so many people that they say, no, I'm not going to do it. If you know how to do this thing that our grandparents did, the vaccine ceases to be a dangerous element. And you can actually help the nation work towards herd immunity mm-hmm. without panicking about the vaccine. Decisions awesome. made in, decisions made in panic are seldom the right decision. Always the wrong decision. Yeah. Decisions made in response to critical assessment, critical evaluation of the mm-hmm. circumstances and the situation lead to either the need to acquire more information and therefore more information gained. You go in search of information you need. And you get mm-hmm. it. And you get it. Or you've based your decision and therefore your actions on a plan of action that arises from critical decision making. This mm-hmm. improves your adaptability. This right. improves your survivability in the natural environment that frankly wants to eat you. Right. Yeah. That's that's nature. It's right. it's eating all uh, in all the on time. Every dimension, it's eating yes. literally. Again, we focus again, uh, and we talked about this last time, didn't we? Mm-hmm. We focus everything <clears throat> we do on what to do, mm-hmm. and not so much on thinking about it. You got to mm-hmm. use your, your faculties mm-hmm. to do yes. these things, but the important element, the operative here, is what are you doing? Right. Step out and do something, and not just sit around and talk about it. Awesome. Okay, guys, um, we're at that magic moment. <laughs> How did that happen? It just happened. I have to. 
uh, everyone needs. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have to get one of those. Limits. I think we so, four, four the, no, no, four to seven. Four so four to seven. I'm gonna give you guys a little closing closing. Just give me a little closing statement. Something you want to just leave with everybody. I know we've said a lot tonight, but there might be <laughs> something that something you more? might want. Just say, hey, do it, do it, do say. It's good do to be it. here. It is good. For it us is good to be for here. us to be here. It is, regardless of what anybody throws at us, whether it's on the screen or it's on the streets or if it's from some loudmouth politician or from some conspiracy theorist, scaremonger, or just from your neighbor, whatever anybody throws at you, take nothing at face value. Yeah. Analyze everything yeah. use that god-given ego of yours <laughs> to decide that it you are worthy of judgment you can take a situation you can judge its benefits its risks you can ascertain whether you have enough information on the on the the situation to critically make a decision of any kind yeah if you don't you then have a direction to go. Well, can I really make a judgment on the situation mm -hmm. without the information? You're not going to know what you don't know unless you really analyze it. And anything, avoid anything that pushes and pushes towards fear right? and has no solution. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things. Look at the the king cobra does a lot to cause you to fear mm -hmm. but with the with the pure and simple knowledge that you're going to run away there is something that you can do mm -hmm. with that fear but if you encounter fear without solution know what it's for and it's nothing but money it's a money grab it's always a money it's grab. just a money grab. right i mean the, my my message is and it will always be at the end of any uh, show is that look if we keep going on not using the special faculties that put us at the top of the evolutional la evolutionary ladder, what a horrible waste. <laughs> we have this great big brain. Yes. Why are we not using it? Use it and act accordingly. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Chief Klopfeller, Chief Walamatakin. My friends, we're gonna my have brothers. to teach you how to say that, aren't we? <laughs> it's way la mat. Way la mat. Way la mat talking. Is that no, way la mat. Way la mat. Think of Willamette as in the Willamette, Willamette River in Oregon. Willamette. Willamette. Yeah, I always. It, that's the name of the river. Well, I always, I always mess it up. My yeah, apologies. You My apologies, <laughs> Sorry, Chief. You are yeah. banished. You are to be punished. <laughs> would be the first time <laughs> <laughs> all right my friends thank you very much for uh coming on we'll have them on next month with with another topic sharing and cruising down nemaha lane here and sharing our uh pottery we'll, we'll have plates next week next month <laughs> awesome oh thank you so much thank, for yeah us thank you. all right going. guys thank you very much you have a great night I hope you everybody enjoyed the show tonight. It was an uh, amazing time. So what is above is below. Ho'oponopono, matakwiasin, irisikwi. Much love, everybody. Take care. Have a good night. I will see you guys next time here on Iggy Garcia Live on the With Insights Radio Network. And that's a wrap. <laughs>